Hey everybody, it's Ron from Ron's Computer Videos. Hey, I just wanted to share something kind of neat that uh, flew under my radar last Margintosh, and uh, I wanted to share it to uh, with everybody at home, uh, just to maybe get it a tiny bit more exposure. But I saw this cool thing that Eric Helgeson had posted about making the ultimate Windows 7.1. Uh, he posted this over on his blog, and uh, I, I just thought maybe it might be a fun thing to go through here and actually follow his guide and see if we can build the ultimate System 7.1 for ourselves. So if we read the article here, uh, basically it says, uh, Macintosh System 7.1.x was a lean and versatile system back in the day. It runs on the Mac Plus onto early power PCs. Its low memory footprint and ability to run almost all System 7 software makes it a great choice for your vintage Mac. In this post, I'll show you how to customize your System 7.1 install to run anything that a System 7.6.1 could, uh, could do. Uh, and even make it look like uh, Mac OS 8 if you chose to. So that's uh, pretty tall claim. So uh, I uh, would thought we would maybe play around and try it out. So, all right. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at what he is suggesting that we need. Um, <clears throat> for uh, tonight's demonstration, I think I'm gonna go ahead and use Basilisk 2, and then uh, I'll probably use the Apple Legacy Recovery CD just to make it easy to get the uh, base OS install and stuff like that. But we will start with kind of a fresh clean system and go from there. Um, let's check out the things that he suggests that we have. So I'm gonna take it as red that we're gonna have a base install of 7.1, and then he is saying that we're going to need system update three, which probably makes a lot of sense. That uh, does some bug fixes and stuff and uh, just some kind of nice uh, quality of life stuff. Um, uh, and again, he provides links. Uh, most everything is just out on Macintosh Garden, but he provides some direct links. And we'll click each page and kind of talk about what version you need to download of everything here in a second. Um, if you are uh, going to be one of those Macintosh users who... Um, needs um, IP access on your machine, um, probably you want to go ahead and install uh, Mac TCP. It's gonna save you a lot of headaches. And then um, you can go ahead, uh, and if you have like, a, he says right here, if you have an 030 machine with four megs of RAM or more, probably wanna install OpenTransport uh, 1.3 so you can actually get a more modern sort of TCP IP uh, stack and all that type of stuff. And he's got links to that as well. Um, Thread Manager allows you to run applications that utilize multi-threading. It's pretty handy. Uh, System 7.1 uh, does not include a clock in the toolbar. That was like some stuff that they added later. So um, the uh, you probably want to go ahead, because I, I think 7.5 is like the very first one that included the clock in the toolbar. You had to run an extension before that. But uh, he's got a good recommendation for SuperClock, which was eventually bought by Apple and included in the OS. Uh, if you want to be able to read uh, PC disks, especially if you're going to be setting this up on an older machine that has a high density floppy drive, uh, that'll get you there. Um, he's also got the uh, 2020 date fix in there. That's good as well. Uh, Appearance Manager, which lets you do some fun things uh, to your themes on the machine. Probably a good thing to check out. Uh, he also has some uh, other kind of nice have things. Uh, System Picker, which is always good if you want to move around and test out different OS's without doing a complete reinstall. If you never played around with that, it's actually quite a bit of fun. It's very, very handy. Um, he's included uh, a link to capture so you can take screenshots. Uh, if you have an Apple extended keyboard, there is a uh, there's a wacky key on the keyboard that you can press that actually like uh, deletes what's in front of the cursor. Uh, but you got to have OS support for that. So he's got that as well. Um, Norton Disk Activity, or I'm sorry, Norton Utilities. There's a Disk Activity uh, like uh, extension or something like that. That might be handy as well. Uh, and then if you're copying things uh, kind of around uh, newer versions of macOS to older versions of macOS, uh, sometimes uh, the research fork gets a little screwed up. So uh, you can use Snitch, which he links to as well, um, to uh, go ahead and, and recover that stuff as well. So in conclusion, he says, as you can see with a system 7.1 uh, plus a few additions, uh, you can have a system that runs everything that you could ever really want to, like up to 7.6.1 could, without all the uh, added bloat. So uh, choose what you want to add to your system and make it yours. So that's really cool. And probably that invites a really good thing. If you've got some extensions for a system 7.1 or some tweaks and stuff that you recommend, 
leave them down in the comments. I learn something new every day. And the only way that we learn is by sharing that information. So, um, so please do. So if you've got a better uh, extension that you like to use for uh, virtual memory or for uh, making it where you can uh, copy files in the background or something like that, share that stuff. I'd love to hear it. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at some of the links. I'm going to uh, spin back up here to the top of the article. We'll start with uh, System Update uh, 3.0, which is included on the uh, Apple Legacy Recovery CD. It's it's out there, disk images. You can just mount it and do that. So we're going to we're going to go that route. Um, uh, if you have a newer Macintosh that you want to go ahead and um, or like at 030 and above, more than four megs of RAM for sure. Um, you can go ahead and you can put Open Transport. There's a great link that uh, goes out here. Uh, just make sure that you can kind of uh, read through this. Um, I, just playing around earlier, you're gonna have the best luck with that download number two because I kept getting that error message that's like, oh, it's insert the disk, and it's like, uh, dude, just read the directory, but it couldn't. Um, there's also a patch for uh, Open Transport to uh, 131, that's probably a good idea if you've got a machine that uh, can take advantage of that. Uh, there is the uh, thread manager uh, that you probably wanna go ahead and download. Uh, from here on this, I think you can, uh, once you extract it, you can go ahead and mount the CD and copy it out to uh, your system and take advantage of all the cool stuff. And of course, super clock, super clock. So you can uh, know what day of the time of it is uh, or if they're going to cancel daylight savings time or not who knows it's where it's such an uncertain time we live in but if you were to download uh 4.0.4 that's the very last version before apple bought them out and that should run on pretty much any uh 68000 mac just like uh, just like it should so uh pc file exchange uh or pc exchange rather uh, you can download this. Uh, this used to, I think at one time, was like a paid add-on. Because I, I just remember that uh, 7.5, I think, includes it. But you had to buy this as an add-on under um, like 7.1 in the old days. Uh, you can check it out. There's a bunch of different versions here. Uh, but probably uh, you just want to, if you're building a 7.1 machine, you probably want to just go for download 5, which is uh, 1.0.4. Um, there's also uh, the link that Eric mentioned earlier. Uh, which goes to the um, uh, 2020 date fix. This is something that was written uh, for the community. So you can download it. There's a couple different options here, um, but since we're doing 7.1, you probably want to go ahead and get the uh, 2020 patch 1.0. I just downloaded this stuff at archive. Um, here's the appearance manager. Uh, you can go ahead and um, you can uh, basically install this on any version of the OS like before uh, 8 and get or take advantage of some of the uh, neat stuff you can do in a definitely with more ram the better on stuff like this because some of these extensions do take up a tiny bit of ram uh, system picker again uh you want to go ahead and if and uh, it's kind of neat because you can actually have like a folder inside your drive called like other os or other versions os i mean you can name it whatever you want and drop a, a system six folder in there or drop a system seven dot one or full one dot folder oh gosh seven dot one folder or like a seven five seven dot five folder something like that and basically the application will go through and bless those folders and make them bootable without having to do like a whole os install um if you don't know what you're doing you can mess your machine up but it is very very handy and i think you only got to mess your machine up one time before you kind of like oh okay well don't don't go so crazy next time um but the, uh, there, there are several different versions. I think the one that probably uh, you could, I would recommend is the 1.1A3. The I think that's like kind of the latest version uh, that should work. So uh, there's Capture. I remember using this quite a bit back in the day uh, to make screenshots and things like that for uh, training materials. So um, it's, a, it's an easy way to get uh, screenshots out of your old Mac. And uh, especially if you're um, working on a project or something like that, ah, it's just kind of fun. You can capture it all on a Mac, load it up in Photoshop, do whatever you want to do. Uh, there's This is that extension, and <laughs> I love how they kind of advertise. This is a very small extension. It only takes 200 bytes of RAM. Uh, but it's the forward delete on the keyboard that uh, I guess basically will um, delete what's in front of the cursor. If you've got a um, one of the Apple... Um, sort of whatever the heck those things are called, the the uh, whatever keyboard, the ergonomic keyboard. 
Uh, Norton Utilities 3.5. Uh, this is basically, it's just a bunch of fun utilities and things like that, but it also gives you like the on-screen disk access light and some other stuff. So it's, um, it's worth checking out. I know, um, speed disk from memory allows you to do those file copies in the background. Um, that, uh, sometimes that's pretty handy, especially on 7.1 because you're like just sitting there forever waiting on a file copy. So it can be nice to be able to do some other stuff at the same time. And, uh, disk light is that extension finally uh that uh gives you like the little n thing up in the corner i know the C in a lot of companies used to do that back in the day but um i think the norton one allows you to do a little bit of customization so anyway and here is snitch uh what snitch again allows you to do is you can go through you can get information and kind of on the fly rather than use like a program like um like creator changer or maybe that's not what it's called but in any case it lets you do it through like a control panel so all right, let's go ahead and let us switch over to our wonderful uh, emulation machine. And as you can see, as I've got it up right now, uh, this is just running Basilisk 2 in a, uh, uh, so just emulation. And we'll see how much of this works under emulation. It, it's very possible that this uh, is probably not well suited for how I'm trying to do this, but we're just having fun. So let's just give it a shot. So, um, uh, the Legacy Recovery CD is available for download out there on uh, Macintosh Garden. I definitely recommend that you get it. it. It's very handy, especially for older Macs, because I, I talk this thing up all the time. If you watch my videos, you know. But you can basically go out there, and um, you can see, um, uh, basically, it's like every version of the OS from 1.0 up to 8.1. Um, and it even goes through and will give you recommendations based on the type of CPU or the type of machine that you're setting up. Uh, but we are just going to do a generic 7.1 install. And we're going to hope that it, whoops, sorry, window, window shade or whatever that's called. All right, let's go ahead. We're going to go ahead and boot this up. And let's go ahead. We're going to switch disk over to 7.1. Uh, basically, this is just going to do a full install. So Macintosh family system software. You can go through and customize if you're going to put this on a very specific Macintosh. But I'm okay with emulation. We'll just let it fly. Uh, put all the printing software on there, file sharing software. It looks great. Let's hit install. And kind of the nice thing about doing the system setups under Basilisk is, man, I just remember the old days, swapping floppies for like 9,000 years. Uh, now uh, you can get it done pretty quick. Okay, it's gone ahead and it has um, uh, dismounted all the disks. And at this point, I'll reveal that I baked something a little head, a bit ahead of time which is I downloaded all the links that Eric had provided. And also I made sure that, you know, we've got some base tools like uh, Discopy 6.3.2 is very handy for like mounting, mounting discs, disc images. And uh, Stuff It Expander is also very, very handy for getting all of these programs that Eric is uh, suggesting to us extracted. Uh, something else I also do uh, when I set up a machine, I set up a little folder and um, make like a little Apple directory or something and kind of move teach text and some other stuff out of the way because uh, yeah, I just like running a clean ship. So <clears throat> here is our system 7.1 uh, setup or our folder basically. And um, again, I've got all those utilities and stuff that um, Eric had suggested. I got them all downloaded and extracted. I, I, the only thing I didn't download is that uh, the thing for the, um, the Apple adjustable keyboard just because I'm not going to use one of those on here. But, you know, if you're one of the, the few people that does have one of those keyboards, you might want to consider adding that as well. All right, so let's go through. And we're just going to go through in order. And we're going to add the things that Eric had suggested <laughs> that we put on this. So, all right, first things first, we're going to get system uh, update 3.0 installed. So let's go ahead and uh, I, I'm using the uh, version of this that's on the legacy recovery CD. Should be just fine. Okay, we're gonna switch over to our 7.1 disk. We're gonna do an easy install, install. That's it, pretty quick. All right, so now, since our emulated machine is uh, a little beefier than most, uh, we can go through and install all the rest of that good stuff. So let's just do that. And we're gonna need to mount these disks. So we'll get them over here to disk copy really great if we don't get any crashes or anything but sometimes that occurs okay open transport 
we're gonna make sure we're gonna put this on our 7.1 disk. This is gonna go ahead and put Open Transport 1.3 for 68k max, Apple Talk 1.3 and TCP IP and all the rest of that stuff for 68k max. Let's get that installed. Wow, only took a second. What do you know? All right, let's go ahead and let's uh, unmount our disk images. And let's go ahead and let's get our, th this is the update to those control panels. So I'm pretty sure that we should be, that this should be smart enough that I could drag it. Yeah, and it'll say, hey, I'm gonna put it in the proper location. Uh, an older item already exists in the location and we wanna replace it, yes. Keep in mind, this is also gonna move our only copies of these things. So I think it should be smart enough to move these extensions as well. Yeah, do you wanna put in the extensions folders? Yes, please. You wanna put it? Yes, same names, that don't matter, replace them. All right. So there's our uh, open transport 1.3.1 update. Okay, so now let's check out the thread manager. Oh, yep, we got a disk image. Let's see if we can actually mount this. Yep, it mounted. Great. Okay, so we're gonna put a thread manager out here in our system folder. Yeah, do you wanna put it in the right place? Yeah, please put it in the right place. I appreciate all of your hard work, Apple. Thank you. All right, super clock. Let's get super clock and uh, you know i probably ought to just drag this to a better location super clock get that in the system control panel looking good pc exchange let's get that installed as well uh the 2020 patch let's get that installed um we can put appearance in here this has a little bit more uh <laughs> kind of stuff to it so um let's go ahead and um I think it should be pretty easy. I uh, gotta move this to uh, control panel. I uh, gotta move this to, oops, probably gotta have extensions visible. There we go. Sorry. Looks like it's the first time I've used a Mac. And let's go into fonts. And we'll copy these new fonts in there. Great. Okay, that should be everything we need for that. Okay, uh, there's System Picker, just a great uh, utility. I'm gonna leave it here in this folder because basically, I mean, I'll run it one time so you can see. But what happens is, is it'll scan your hard drive and it'll pick like, you know, like it's scanning across the whole system. But I mean, if you have multiple system folders on a machine, it'll, it'll definitely on one drive, definitely it'll go through and um, do some cool stuff for you. But there's, uh, there's capture. You can run that like as a thing. And let's see what we got here. Oh man, all these all these disk images, wowza. Okay, we'll do that here in a second. Let's go ahead and, oops, we need to get rid of super clock. Um, let's go ahead and let's get all of our disk images mounted. Oh, doesn't like that one. <laughs> it's always something. Let's see, did we mount any of them? No. Let's see, utilities disk one, can we mount it? Yeah, it's locked, you want me to save anything? Ah, that's fine. Well, we might be having a problem with the uh, Norton stuff. Sometimes it's just a bad download. Yeah, didn't really like that. That's all right, but you know, sometimes that is just the way of the world. So I will have to investigate that a little bit later, but the only thing we're missing out really technically on that is the uh, <laughs> is the the uh, disk light um, sort of activity or the disk activity light, but that's okay. So we'll get back to that. Uh, but yeah, there's Snitch. Let's go ahead and let's get Snitch installed. It should be smart enough to put it out there. And it was. All right. So there we go. Uh, by Eric's estimation, we have built the ultimate System 7.1. Let's go ahead and let's clean some things up. All right, moment of truth. Uh, let's go ahead and I'm gonna shut down Basilisk. So things are gonna go black over here for just a second as I uh, go ahead and reconfigure Basilisk and make sure we're gonna take the um, the uh, Apple legacy software recovery disk out of the loop and we're gonna reopen uh, Basilisk 2. Hey, we're back. All right, so we got some cool things. Ooh, look, there's some cool appearance stuff going on. Um, let's go ahead and Let's switch into color and then let's see how things look. 256 colors, yeah, not too bad. 
Look at that, man. That that's very pretty, comparatively. Uh, getting some like weird mini stuff. I don't know. That could be just something in uh, Basilisk too. But but there we go. Uh, System 7.1. We got a footprint of of about um, two and a half megs, just under two and a half megs of RAM. So if you've got a machine that's got eight megs of RAM, or it's got um, like 10 megs of RAM, so like an LC or something like that, uh, that might not be too bad. Let's take a look at some of this fun stuff that we can do. Of course, always take a look. Oh, wow, that had, I think that was like set at 512K. Wow, crazy. Um, but uh, yeah, let's take a look at Superclock. You can absolutely go in here and customize this any old darn way you choose. And um, like I think back in the day, I had it where it would flash the colons, um, but that's really, uh, quite annoying as an adult, <laughs> but that's all right. So super clocks installed. We've got, uh, the cool appearance stuff. Uh, snitch is on as well. Let's take a look and see. Forgot how that works. Forgot how snitch works. That's okay. Let's see. It's on default plugin is more info. Yeah, and there's some additional plugins and stuff you can do. It may not work with um, system files like that. Let's take a look. Yeah, there we go. But here's an application, and you can just kind of go in. And you can change, um, change different things about it, and you know, pretty handy. Pretty handy if you're um, uh, trying to get more information, like this application here. According to this. Um, uh, stuff at Expander 5.5 is PowerPC ready. So I don't know if that means that there's PowerPC code or if there's um, some other stuff in it that uh, just marks it as being able to run on PowerPC machines. I don't know for sure, but that's okay. Uh, I do like this 30-bit compatible. There used to be a thing back in the day that would, like there was like a program or something that was like System 7 Savvy or and I think there was like a, a an add-on for that or something that would tell you if your program only supported 24-bit mode, something like that. But anyway, this looks pretty. I dig this. Um, I wonder what, I guess you can switch to some other themes and such. I just redid the, the, the slider there. Um, double click menu bar to collapse. Oh yeah, that's nice. Under seven, under seven one, having a um, window shade. That's, that's really handy. I dig that. Um, the system, the system wide font is pretty cool too. I like that too. Um, let's go back. Now we got a bunch of options here. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty pretty. I dig it. Um, yeah, I think lavender was like the, the base thing. So, but yeah, there you have it. Um, I think we have made a very pretty uh, System 7. There's a lot visually kind of nice going on here. I'm sure you could replace your hard drive icon with stuff, but yeah, it's got those later style um, uh, folder icons and stuff. Yeah, I really dig that. That's really cool. So anyway, Eric might be onto something with his ultimate System 7.1 stuff. So maybe it's worth checking out. So uh, again, I, I will invite you to go ahead and leave your suggestions down in the comments. Uh, again, that's the only way we learn is to share information. And uh, hey, I just wanted to say again, thank you to Eric uh, for posting this last year in March and Tosh. We had a lot of people that posted things just out on the web, blog posts, things like that. Maybe didn't get as, as much of attention as uh, like some of these um, YouTube videos and other projects and things like that, but, but they are still wonderful Macintosh content uh, nonetheless. So anyway, as uh, I, I just want to thank everybody for stopping by. Have a wonderful evening. As I always say, Apple II forever. <laughs>